committee as well as coordinating volunteers to attend the naturalization ceremonies for new citizens. And I wanted to do something you know, to help the community, so I got involved in doing naturalizations. Well, um, the first and every naturalization is set up the same way. It is a function of the U.S. federal court, so it's done, and most of them are done in a courtroom, the federal courthouse in Cincinnati, although they do them here at Dayton as well. Um, you come in and you have the applicant sitting in front of the court. Uh, the court is brought into um, activity and the new applicants are asked to stand up and state their name and their country of their birth or their last country where they had citizenship and then they have to say a pledge uh, renouncing that citizenship and accepting the responsibilities of being an American citizen and then we say the um, Pledge of Allegiance and then we are to stand up and be recognized. There's different social service agencies, the Daughters of the American Revolution, Bar Association, people from our two U.S. Senators are there to present letters on their behalf. And then um, basically court is recessed and adjourned and it's usually done within an hour. But the level of happiness and excitedness and Families are there sitting further back, um, you know, there to support their loved ones who are becoming U.S. citizens. You see a lot of American flags, there's lots of emotion. So it's always very happy and very positive experience. We go um, in order, we pass out literature at the end, and that's when I actually get to, to talk to the new citizens. We welcome them to the country or you know, welcome them as fellow citizens. And we hand out literature which talks about what not only the International Services Committee but what the Red Cross as an organization can do. And most people know that we are the disaster relief people, but we're so much more than that. We have international human rights law courses. Um, and we're looking for new volunteers as well. And a lot of those people are very receptive when we, they see us there because we're obviously reaching out to, to them as new citizens. But it's obvious too with our brochure that we're reaching out to new communities of new Americans, new cultures. And you know, if you come to the Red Cross, you'll see people from um, just everywhere around the world. We really are reflective that we are, even in this area, a global community. Since our whole purpose is to be nonpartisan supporters of human rights and you know we don't take sides in any conflict, we help where we're needed, and our values are such that we don't see people's differences, we see their samenesses. If we had all the same type of people that worked at the Red Cross, it wouldn't reflect our values. Uh, I think that's important because the Red Cross needs to reflect the fact that this area is now a really global community with people from across the world that are working here and living here. And if we didn't go to the Red Cross and see that reflected, then that wouldn't support what we, what our belief system is. Humanity is all the same and people in distress, it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. We're here to help people, we take no sides. Yes, we are there in a disaster, but we're there as well when there's a disaster across the world and we need to trace somebody's family that are lost. And we've done a lot of that with like the earthquakes in Pakistan, earthquakes in Iran. You know, you have people living in the Cincinnati Dayton area that have family there. They want to know how they are so they can come to the Red Cross and we can trace their families for them. So um, just in a nutshell, that's what it is. And it's an international body. It's not just the American Red Cross, but it's, it's spread throughout the world of people with like-mindedness. There's the whole Red Cross movement, and it is a movement, and it's a movement where you throw out politics, you throw out differences, and you only look for the likenesses, and you only look for people that need help, and we're willing, we, the Red Cross, are willing to help them. They're citizens of this country, I'm a citizen of this country. We stand and put our, our hand over our heart, and we, when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, 
when I say those words with those new citizens, it definitely means a lot more than it really ever has in my life because I, again, I know why and what they went through to become new citizens. So there's always, it's solemn for me, but it's very, again, it reinforces my belief in the greatness of this country and the fact that these people are willing to leave their lives and come to this country. I think the most important thing that a lot of people don't know is the courses that we offer. The Red Cross offers, the international service is, is over this, are the international human uh, law courses. Um, I know that they get continuing education credits for some professions, I think social work, but um, I think anybody, any college student, anybody that's doing grad student work that, that has anything to do with international human rights, this would be a wonderful course to take. And I know the people that give it personally, and these are seasoned professional people, and it's really an outstanding experience. Um, anybody that's interested in taking the International Human Law courses needs to contact the Red Cross at, at, in Cincinnati at the Cincinnati chapter and they will refer you on to the right people to get you signed up.